Welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George. You know, anytime we get an opportunity to talk about distilling, beer making, wine, or our community of distillers and brewers, our customers, anytime we get a chance to do that, my goodness, it's a good day and we get all excited about it. So please forgive me. Hey, if you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, well, welcome to our brew laboratory or whatever you want to call it. But we do the very best we can to share as much information as possible to help make you successful uh, in your own hobby. Now here's a challenge. Here's a challenge that I have the discussion with all the time is the uses of yeast. A bread yeast, a beer yeast, a wine yeast, a distiller's yeast. And now remember that alcohol by volume is a function of two things. Well, the many, many things, but two primary functions. One function is the type of yeast that you use. If you're using a bread yeast, you're looking at probably three to six percent alcohol by volume is about your max. And that's because of the tolerant level of the yeast that's been cultivated. It's cultivated for bread. You're not trying to get drunk off of bread. We just need that yeast activity. So it's a very low grade yeast. A beer is about eight, maybe a little bit over eight percent. And then it kind of drops out. Remember anything over eight percent in a beer really is a barley wine. Wine yeast will go anywhere from 10 to 12 to 14, some up to 16 percent. A champagne yeast is about 18%. Your distiller's yeast will get you up to 20, sometimes 22% if you use a staged fermentation process. That's a different story all in itself. But you'll see the differences in the tolerance of wine levels. So you go for everywhere from a 3% to a 20%. That's one function. The second function is the amount of fermentable sugars. Hmm. I, I love having this discussion, but I want to make sure that it's crystal clear. And if we're going to have a five gallon bucket, now let's talk about distilling only, okay? This is just distilling. We've got a five gallons of mash. And we put all this effort into it. And at the end of the day, my question to you is, would you much rather distill five gallons and get three to five percent, which is equal to about maybe one pint or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more, or would you rather distill it when it is 18 percent and get three quarters of a gallon or more? Your time is precious. The time it takes to run both of these is going to be equal. It's going to take the same amount of time, but with the effort that you put into it, I'd rather get a little bit more out of it. You know, you, you see where I'm going, and this has absolutely nothing to do with proof. Proof is a direct reflection of your process, not your alcohol by volume. Your alcohol by volume is one thing. Your proof is totally a different story. Now. Let's talk about this alcohol by volume issue when it comes to yeast and fermentable sugars. Oh, and, 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 and I'm, I know you can track with this because it's not that difficult. One pound of sugar will raise the gravity points by 0 0.032 per pound per gallon. So if I had five pounds of sugar in five gallons of water, it would be the same thing, 32 gravity points. So that means that my hydrometer should float at 1.032. It'll float right here. If I put two pounds per gallon, which would be 10 pounds of sugar in five gallons of, ma of water, then it would be 6.4. That's where my hydrometer would float. You'll notice that 1.064 is a little bit below 10%. That's not bad. See, if I can get above 1.080, now I'm starting to get into the teens. I'm getting 11 teens. No, I'm getting 11. I can move up to 12, 13, 14, 15%. So not only is it the type of yeast that you use, but it's the amount of fermentable sugars that are in your wash to start with. So please don't get those confused. All right, you're not going to take um, a champagne yeast 
and get and you, to 10 pounds of sugar and 5 gallons of water, champagne yeast, and you wind up with 7%. Is that even possible? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. And then someone tells you, well, you know, if you do the same thing and you use distiller's yeast, you'll get 18%. That's not possible. It's, you, you can't get there from here. It's, you know, you, you can't put $10 in the bank and then say, well, if you drive around the block and go the other way, it'll be $20. It's not. It, it, you just can't get there. So understand that you've got those two functions that you've got to work with. You've got to work with the quality of yeast, and then you've got to work with the quantity of fermentable sugars. And if you can match those up, you get that perfect, it's not a perfect storm, but it's a perfect marriage of the amount of fermentable sugars and yeast that are working in your favor and producing ethyl alcohol. Kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? See, when you wrap it all together, it, it's a whole lot easier to understand, so you're not as confused. Well, it's not that you're confused, but it's not as confusing. So you can wrap it all together and make it make sense of it. All right, let's erase this, and we already know. And we're using a lot of terms that we've covered before in many of the other videos. So feel free to go back and look at those at the video series. We've got 90 some videos out there, and a lot of this is covered. And I'll go over it again and again and again, and I'll produce a couple more probably with the same or similar type information explained different ways. That's what I have for you as far as measuring is concerned. One last point I want to make, sanitation. Um, and we're not talking about operating room sanitizers. Uh, we're just talking about star saying. Uh, I'll use this bottle. This is an eight ounce bottle and I've used it. You see how much I've got left. I've used it for two years. Uh, it's one ounce per five gallons, so it goes a long way, but it's a spray and use, spray, shake, and use type. If you've got a clean utensil already, all you need to do is spray it, shake it, and then you can use it because it's a contact sanitizer. But remember, whatever you sanitize has got to be clean first. Now, here's my caution. We have it in an eight ounce and in the four ounce bottles. It's one ounce per five gallons. Uh, just follow the directions. You know, two ounces per five gallons doesn't make it any better. Uh, it, if you have a septic system at home, be very, very careful. Do not pour this down the drain because uh, it will kill all of those bugs that you need in your septic system. And guess what? Yep, it's going to start to back up on you. And you're going to call me. Uh, and I'm going to ask you if you poured some star sand down the sink. And then you got to go down to Walmart and get you some Rid X or whatever you got to do to replace all that bacteria that's in your septic system so it'll start to function again. So please do not pour any of this down the sink if you've got a septic system at home. But you can use it out in the grass. You, you know, just, just don't pour it in your septic system. It will kill all of those bacteria in there that you really need. So without further ado, that's about it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the topic and we've demystified certain areas and maybe we've clarified some stuff. Please share us with your friends. And until next time, as always, happy distilling.